All right, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make this Viewmaster effect based on the vintage children's toy. So you may be asking, what the heck am I going to use this for? I have no idea. I thought this would be a fun little thing to make, so I wanted to show you how I did it. All right, so before we actually start building this thing, I just needed to let you know this is quite complicated and time consuming. And if you want to skip all that and download it just for $2, follow the link below and go to my company ToonSquid, which also has some DaVinci Resolve templates, as well as some free royalty free music that is absolutely safe to use for videos. As you can see here, I'm just going to go straight into the template that I have because it would be way too time consuming otherwise to build all of this again from scratch. So let's turn everything off and get going on this. Okay, so right now we're basically going to have what you would have if you just imported a photo and had just the media in to the media out. Nothing in this chain is actually turned on right now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is make it that square shape that a Viewmaster would have. So to do that, just click on this rectangle mask here. It'll open it up. And if I turn mine on, you'll see exactly what we're doing. Basically make it a square, turn up the width, adjust the height if you need to, and turn up the corner radius until you get some nice rounded edges. The Viewmaster has really rounded edges, so try to mimic that as best as you can. And then give it a very, very marginal soft edge. We'll come back to why in a moment. From here, you need to adjust the size of the photo. So hit shift space on your keyboard and bring up the transform node and Basically, all we're doing here is adjusting the size down a tiny bit so it doesn't go off the edge of your workspace. From here, we're going to be splitting it into two different photos to do some separate processing on each one. This will mimic the left and the right eye in the Viewmaster. So from here, I'm going to go to the left side one and just show you everything that we're doing there. And the first node we need to add is the film damage. And as you can see here, it makes a big difference towards the final color grade that we see in the original Viewmaster. They're all shifted very much towards the blue end of the spectrum and tend to be missing a lot of those warm colors. So basically turn the temperature shift and the tint shift down, adjust it to whatever photo that you're working with. And then because... <laughs> the joys of living in the country. We've got a train going by. So as I was saying, uh, we're also going to need to turn up the film blur quite a bit. You have to remember these were basically made in the late 30s or early 40s. So the picture resolution wasn't nearly as good as it is now. Turn up the blur a little bit and then we can also add scratches. We can add dirt. So I've turned mine up here, turn it up to taste. If I turn up the density, you'll see I do have quite a bit of it. I also have the scratch on the left side. And if I turn on the right side and put that into frame here, you'll see it's going to be different because again, on a Viewmaster, they're two separate photos. It's not exactly the same one. So you are going to see degradation that's going to be different between the left and the right side. And even buying these brand new I remember as a kid, they came pre-scratched and dirty. So you may want to add in scratches and dirt just to really sell the effect. From here, if we go back to the left side, I'll turn on the color corrector. Just add that in as a node. And we're going to be shifting it towards the greens and the cyans. And we're also going to turn down the saturation a little bit. So if I turn this on and off, you can see exactly what it is that we're doing. And this is basically going to be that final grade. These are always a bit muted in terms of their colors. And again, the warm tones were never really prominent. It was always more towards the greens and the blues. So just adjust it to taste, but get something similar to what I have here. Now, the next thing is one of the biggest things that's going to sell this as a Viewmaster. And that's going to be the edge detect. So if I turn this on, and put it on screen, it's going to look absolutely terrible, but trust me. So the reason that we did the feathered edge earlier is because 
on basically every Viewmaster I've ever tried out, there was always a blue shift happening around the top of the image. Don't know why every single one has had it. So we're going to be mimicking that with the edge detect. And as you can see, this basically ruined our entire image, but make sure to set the color to blue and then we're going to mask it so that only the top edge is going to be affected. To do that, click on the edge detect that you just put in and add another rectangle mask. So we can see that when I turn it on, I'm going to be hitting only the top edge right up until the point where it starts to curve. And if you want to, you can feather this a little bit. I didn't, but that's basically what we're doing. We only want the top edge to have that blue mark. So if we turn that on and off, you can see it just adds this little bit of realism to the top of the photo. Next thing we're going to be doing is actually moving it to the left side. So add another transform node and then just bring it over to where we need it to go. Pretty straightforward. And now the final one that we're going to be doing in terms of our individual processing is going to be another transform node, but this is the one that we're going to animate to give it some movement. So if I turn this on, you can see that my pivot points are basically well beyond where the screen is. And that's actually what you want to do. Remember the Viewmaster has a circular disc with photos offset near the edge. So we have to mimic it rotating into place. The way to do that is by moving the pivot points beyond the edge of the screen. And then we're just going to be rotating it in just like the Viewmaster would. So if I go from the beginning, you can see that in this case, I have a 20 degree angle. And as it goes, it's going to move it into place. And now on this movement, I did also go into the settings tab, turn on some motion blur, adjust the quality, the spread to taste. And based on what your computer can handle, I went a little bit beyond what mine could do. So I can't play this back live, but it doesn't take too long to render. And now if we were to just do this, it's going to come in completely smooth and not have that snap into place that the original Viewmaster has. So this doesn't look very good, but we basically have to mimic what the Viewmaster would do. So what the Viewmaster has that allows the light to go through is some cutouts in the back that allow light to pass, but they have a very slightly feathered edge. So you can see a little bit of it as it swings into place, but beyond a certain point, you're not going to see anything. So the way that we mimic that is, you guessed it, another rectangle mask. So if I turn this one on, you can see this is where my rectangle is going to be. This is my mask, I've got a feathered edge. So if I go back to this movement and now we bring it back in, you can see that it's no longer in the bottom corner and will only start appearing a little bit there as it hits that rectangle mask. And now for the right side, we're basically doing everything but in reverse. So if I turn all of these on, you're going to see that it's going to be coming in basically backwards to mimic what it would be if a circle was rotating in place. So what I found is that the Viewmasters wouldn't always snap in at exactly the same time. So you can offset the motion by a frame. So I have it set up so the left side is at 25 frames to do the full rotation and the right side is 24. You can change the angle very marginally on one of them. So uh, 20 degrees versus 19.5, that's not something the eye is going to notice but it is something that's going to affect the speed of the rotation. So play around with it to get the exact movement that you want. And then the last thing that we need to do is throw in the background. So put in another merge node, toss in a black background as obviously the background on the merge, put everything else in the foreground. So one thing that I did to help really sell this is throw in a jittery click on the left side. Every Viewmaster that I've had or that I've seen always had a little bit more of a click as it was coming in. So I mimicked this by throwing another uh, rectangle mask and 
I just animated the motion of it. I'm going to put the rectangle on the left side and the final product on the right. So what you're going to see is that the rectangle itself is going to be taking up the majority of the screen. And as the photo is coming into place, it's just going to move down a little bit, giving it a little more of this clicking in effect. And that's really it. You can also add this to the right side, but again, Viewmasters had a difference between the left and right, so I only threw it in on the left, and I think it looks pretty damn good. And uh, again, if you need any free royalty-free music, or if you wanted to download this effect or any other ones that I have, go to my company ToonSquid and grab it all from there. If this video was helpful at all, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.